LSU and chemical engineering really has a great history here. It's a lot like Louisiana's history. There was a lot of sugar refining and crystallization work going on even 100 years ago. And that really turned into sugar engineering, which turned into chemical engineering. The grad students are really the real power, or the real force that drives the research that happens here. It's a huge change from a bachelor's level to become an expert in, in the field of some area. Cancer, materials, energy, catalysis, you name it, they go on and do great things from here. I'm a fourth year PhD student, so I do experimental research. What we do is a type of material science that uses colloidal particles. We want to find ways that a user can, in fact, change the interactions that particles have. Amit is working on the assembly of these micron-sized chloral particles into unusual cluster structures. And we actually bring in our knowledge of chemical engineering and thermodynamics to program how would you actually tweak that behavior. Dr. Barry and I kind of match in terms of personalities and attitudes towards science. He taught me the, the methods and the kind of approaches doing experimental science and kind of proving principles. I treat him as a colleague, not as my student. And Ahmed is one of those students with very unique ability to, to answer very difficult questions in science and engineering. I work with Dr. Benton and Dr. Barty, so I do a combination of biological work, biochemical engineering, and colloids. So I study bacteria that are able to degrade different hydrocarbons, so oil, plastic, stuff like that. Dr. Benton gives me a lot of freedom, which I really enjoy. I was allowed to design my project from the beginning. The only thing he told me was he wanted to clean up oil spills. So we're one of the few schools that actually still focus on understanding oil spills that occurred there and how we can clean it up. And we developed the technology of essentially plant-based uh, materials for something called oil hardening. These are essentially nanoparticles that are made of literally wood. Being in Louisiana and what Gulf South went through, if we have the tools, we have the understanding, it's our moral responsibility to do that. We create these surfaces called metasurfaces. They have functionality beyond what you'd find in nature. So one of the first things that we built in our lab to achieve these metasurfaces was a vacuum evaporation system. And Tiago, who was one of my first graduate students, was really instrumental to developing that. When you're making structures that interact with light, uh, the quality of the material is really, really important. When you put down metal in a, in a vacuum environment, you can achieve a material quality. The quality of the actual metal is really good, and light is sensitive to that. From the very beginning, I was fascinated with the fact of abstracting physical realities, like a chemical plant or a, any sort of system, and translating that into a mathematical expression, and then manipulating that mathematical expression to try to understand and build something with, new with that. Getting data from the lab or from the plant is expensive, can be dangerous, and can take time and resources. So if we can minimize the amount of data that we need, and then combine this little data with physical knowledge, then we can build models very quickly, very cost efficient, and that's sort of the focus of, of my research. We have a lot of variety for research, so basically anything that anyone's interested in, or even if they didn't know that they were interested in it. You are given all the tools that you need to succeed. I have had the opportunity to work with professors that are willing to teach me all the many aspects of research. I have been able to contribute to proposals, uh, deciding which ideas we're gonna try. I have had the opportunity to work my own ideas and develop them. So one of the things I think that's exciting for students coming here is being in this space, being in Patrick Taylor Hall, which is all brand new just a few years ago. It's the largest freestanding engineering building in the United States. It's about 13 acres under one roof. The labs, the classrooms, the natural light. It's a wonderful place to come to work every day. We here at LSU have a synchrotron facility that is the only synchrotron in the southern United States, right? So that's something that you would not have access to if you went to most other institutions. We also have a, a really up and coming nanofabrication facility that's been bringing on many new pieces of equipment that is also getting very cutting edge as well. That machine shop is really special and the people who work there are phenomenal at what they can build in terms of uh, reactors, things like this. If, if you were at another school, you would have to draw that and then send it off and hope that they came up and made the right thing. 
but here, they're right there. So Louisiana is a great place to live. We are well known for the food here. In fact, I tell these two undergraduates in my class as well, I teach thermodynamics, that I'm not really in so-called thermodynamic equilibrium because over time I keep on gaining weight. I particularly like the kind of combination of Baton Rouge and New Orleans uh, being so close. I see New Orleans as a place where I go do fun things and uh, where things happen around here. And, and uh, Baton Rouge is kind of the perfect place for a kind of a quieter uh, environment where you can actually get work done. A lot of our graduate students, they go on to do great things. Two have gone to work at Intel recently, others have gone to work at, at Colgate. We've sent some to national labs, some are faculty at other universities all around the world. One of our distinguished alumni is Ron Rousseau, who's uh, the author of probably the most common used textbook by all chemical engineers in one of their early classes. I am a research and development known as an R&T engineer at Albemarle Corporation. I've been there for three and a half years, and basically my job entails doing design work for new processes, but then also looking at existing products that we have and working on process improvement. What I found was that some schools really focus more on one aspect of chemical engineering. At LSU, I found there was a lot of variety in what research was going on there. So once I did the visit at LSU, I was completely sure this is where I wanted to be. It's not only what LSU achieved over the past 50 or 100 years as a department, but it was the people each and every faculty was talking to each other, how they were you know, cross-pollinating the ideas that drew me to this place. I valued that camaraderie within the department and that when other people succeed in the department, uh, people care about that and they, they support that success. And LSU is really paving the way for whatever I want to do. Dr. Benton, Dr. Barty, and even Dr. Fleek have been very supportive in helping me make contacts with future employers or different colleagues that I would work with in the future, which has been very nice. What happens here is really transformational. You go from uh, having a, a bachelor's level degree in chemical engineering to becoming an, an expert, a world expert in some particular field. And where you take it from there is really up to you. The sky's the limit.